All right. Well, I don't think we're expecting anybody else at this point, so we'll go ahead and get started. And Holly, if you can start with your staff report. Uh, hey everyone, thanks for taking the time this evening. Um, so um, I'm just gonna give a few updates. So first of all, um, a couple of weeks ago, our FY22 budget passed, woo woo. So um, that means that we will have funding to give out BAC grants next year. So really happy about that. Um, in addition to those normal funds, so um, we were also allocated um, ARPA funds for um, FY22. And I'm trying to think strategically about how we might allocate those funds to performance art groups and artists to be able to pay to use spaces like the Waldron and the Buzz Kirk Chumley Theater at a reduced rate. So thinking about groups that wouldn't normally be able to afford those spaces on their own. Um, so as my strategic plan <laughs> comes into place to actually allocate those funds, I'll probably be looking to all of you for support and figuring out the best way to administer those grants and then select recipients of them. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, I also wanted to share, um, so we did have a press conference at the Waldron Arts Center on uh, Friday evening just to update the public and let them know that we do have every intention of reopening the space in early January 2022. We're hoping to have a kickoff event um, that both celebrates the overall reopening of the space, but also highlights the 29th anniversary of WFHB, who has been a longtime resident of the space. They're going to celebrate their 29th anniversary, um, basically on the same date that we're reopening the facility. Um, so as plans for that come into place, I'll be sharing more information about that. Um, I also have some specific public art updates, but uh, and I'm happy to give those now, or we can wait until the public. Yeah, let's go ahead and wait until we're okay. in that section. Awesome, okay, um, that's really all I've got right now, but I'm happy to answer any questions at this point about any of those things. Does anybody have any questions? All right, and then let's jump straight into a uh, financial update. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. Give me just a minute. I have way too many screens open. Screen two. Hold on just a second. Okay, can everybody see our financial page? Yep. Great, okay, so um, as you can see, we've got um, two accounts again. Um, the first account, that $61,635.66 is basically a combination of the 60,000 that the city has given us to allocate for our fall BAC, BUEA grant cycle, plus a little extra money, which is like basically a carryover of the 2% annual increase to the overall like usual $40,000 that the city allocates to us for our annual grant cycle. Uh, the 39.61.65 account, that's basically our operating budget. And my understanding is this is the account we can use to to pay for things like a performance by a group like Windfall at our um, December 3rd um, opening celebration for the trades gate, the trades garage opening. So, and what is the balance on that? Oh, sorry, account? the balance on that is $3,961.65. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Any, Any questions other regarding questions? the financials? All right. Okay. Did you all have a chance? to review the minutes that Holly transcribed for us. Any questions or comments or updates to the minutes? Okay, I move to approve the minutes from last month. Second. All right, I uh, will go in the order of my screen. Karen? Yes. Nick? Yes. Rachel? Yes. So that yes, Liz. Yes. Perfect. So that takes care of that. Unfortunately, um, we had to reschedule our guest presentation for today. We'll be having that in December. So we can jump straight into the public art 
committee update. So Nick and Holly, if you can inform us. No battery, no battery, no battery. And Babette, if you can mute your phone. Um, Nick, do you want to start with the public art update and I can jump in? Yeah, um, you know, I, I guess with the 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 one percent projects, you know, I can I can give updates that we discussed in our public art meeting last week, um, and you can add on um, as I go. Uh, Trades Garage, um, Esteban uh, may have finished the the installation um, this this past weekend. Yeah, they he just yeah. they had to come back and do a little lighting repair this afternoon. So it's basically cool. set to go and you can see it at night now. Yeah. Amazing. Um yeah. can't wait to check that out. So cool. Um yeah. so we're discussing a, a December 3rd um ribbon cutting soft opening date. Um which the which Esteban, the mayor, and windfall dancers are all available for. Um Bryony has proposed that we offer a, a stipend um, to windfall um, as we as the Arts Commission do not want to ask artists to work for free. Um, and uh, and so I think we need to figure out how many people will be involved in that. Um, so we can so we know that now. Bryony, do you want to go ahead and discuss that here? Um, or did you have that pin for a later point? Um, I think it we can discuss it today. We have the time since we do not yeah. have the guest presentation after all. And uh, and even if we don't like nail exact amount, just getting a broad sense of what everybody thinks is appropriate so that we can start to lay the groundwork for other ribbon cuttings and other commissions that we have or participation from our community um, artists that we know what we're looking at. Um, in this case for windfall, there, it's a two part component they're doing kind of a teaser performance in December and then they will be back in the spring when we have a larger activation of the space with an expanded performance and there's five dancers involved. So it is an original piece that they're creating for this. Um, so I would like to hear what others think would be an appropriate um, stipend for something like this. I honestly have no idea, but I'm willing to support anyone who does. <laughs> Is there some information that you can take from the music industry that we could apply somewhat? Oh, I don't know. That's a, t <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I feel like you know, there, there's the performance aspect of it, um, you know, and, and, and you know, th this is a custom piece, you know, this is a, a unique piece, you know, there's extra preparation and planning and practice Rehearsals. that goes into that. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a little different than just like sort of like a, you know, showing up and doing a repeat performance of, you know, material that's already in your repertoire or whatever, but um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like uh, five dancers, you know, I, I, I'm just like, I'm kind of like shooting in the dark, like hundred bucks a piece, something like that. You know, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if we want to throw in a little bit more for a choreographer. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just, I'm just kind of picking a number, but I'd love yeah. to know what other people think about that. Yeah, so far my one thought has been like two hundred and fifty dollars for this one and five hundred for the second. Um, that's kind of like where my gut instinct is taking me, just because the second one will be more an expanded. There be costumes, there be other parts to it, um, and they might be like they start at the trades garage but end up in Stefan Rita's piece or something like that. Um, 
yeah, how I mean, you were going to look into some of the best practices, it, but it, that was, we we're talking about that on Friday and you might have not had. Yeah. And I, and I apologize. I have not, but I do, yeah. think, I mean, I, I do agree. I think like 75, 750, I think is a good place to start overall, but I think it would, I, I think it would really benefit us to kind of vet that number and just make sure we're not like super, I don't, I don't anticipate we're going to be way too high, but I don't want to be way too high, but I also don't want to insult them by giving them like a lower amount. And I do feel, and I, and I do think it's very important, not just to pay them for their labor, but to pay them a fair wage for their labor. And I think, so just kind of, I, I, I think I can definitely take some time to just kind of learn like more about what the standards are here, but also again, I think I mentioned the wage tool um, last week that is just this great tool that many arts entities use to based on their overall budget and based on what kind of work it is, is it an original work or is it just like a repeat of a dance performance or a lecture to determine like what the fairest cost is? So um, if I could have just about a week to do that research and oh, just- Oh yeah, absolutely. Back. I think it's totally fine. Uh, I spoke with Kay from Windfall and Great. said, we're looking into this. Okay. I don't have a number for you yet. Okay. If you want to give me any Anything. base number or any information yeah. that I could use <laughs> and take back to the commission, you know, please do yeah. so because being that that's what they do. Right. You might have a better sense that she was going to talk to the company in the group. Right. You, you know, I, maybe this has already been thought of, but um, do we have any information from like grant applications that might be useful to this end? You know, like, like, that's a great, I can, you know, like reference that. digging back on like budgets that might've been submitted that might've included and windfall budgets has for applied. talent. Exactly. Like I, I and I, I haven't, you know, I've seen the last couple cycles, but that might be worth taking a look at. That's a, that's yeah, a good that's, idea. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and when you talk to Winfall Holly and w when they're coordinating that you're coordinating with us, Taban, that's the one, yeah. um, it would be worth looking into how much, if it's going to be an original piece and if there's going to be like an improv side, because they were talking right. about, you know, or I proposed that to them. If they're experienced dancers, there's definitely room for imp yeah. improvising a, um, on the different levels and things like that. So as they've had a chance to kind of talk about what it is that they're doing a little bit more, get a sense, a better sense of what the pieces will actually be. Yes. <laughs> and how much, how much they're rehearsing, how much right. they're how much labor is. Yeah, great. Happy to do that. Cool. Thanks. Okay, Nick, moving on. Well, any questions from anybody other than I, I see that we have approval to go offer a stipend moving forward. Do we need to actually have a vote on that since we're spending money? I think, I think we probably technically do, but we probably need the dollar amount first. I mean, it's, it's. What if we, I know. So one other thing we, um, discussed at Friday's meeting was just kind of creating overall a matrix to reference going forward. So what if that was the piece that we um, did an approval of that would then include? Yeah, or for what how about this? I, I motion to approve the use of the second account, which ends in, I don't remember what it ends in. Uh, for, for, I always called the 403 account. <laughs> The 403 the, account. The operational and, expenses account. <laughs> to allocate some money there with a future vote on exact amount towards paying artists that will be involved in any event produced by the Bloomington Arts Commission. Do I have a second? I second. Perfect. Karen? Yes. <laughs> Nick? Yes. Babette? Yes. And we sim seem to have lost Liz for now, but that's quorum, so we're good. Okay. Another okay. 1%. Um, yeah, then uh, switch our park. Um, this is coming up fast, but looking at a, a November 19th. Um, ribbon cutting, uh, the Elizabeth Mitchell resilience performance would be held for a later activation in the spring. Um, the weather's nicer and we can get a bigger crowd out. Um, I am 
personally going to be out of town um, most likely on that date. I, it's still kind of, I'm still trying to figure it out, but if, and I know Karen's unavailable. Have we confirmed whether any other commissioners are available? I can be there. Okay. Um, I also, so I just want to, uh, Liz is back. Um, I just want to share that about three hours ago, I got confirmation finally that that does work for the mayor's office. So I just want to confirm that everybody's okay going forward with such short notice. Um, I just want to acknowledge, I think, um, what I'm going to need to be able to pull this off is just some support in getting the word out about the event. We'll of course do a press release and I'll work to just reach out to those and like a, my like list of people to contact going forward to make sure there's audience. But if I could have support there and what I might also um, ask for support with um, if someone has capacity to do this is um, Helping, I know we discussed potentially having a student group either play a piece or read a poem. Is there anyone who might be able to help me find that group in the next week? That would be super helpful. I know a couple of high school students okay. are, that might be able to help. Um, I yeah. can reach out later tonight. Okay. That if that helps, great. unless anybody else wants to, has any other ideas. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, do we have, or if anybody can give me a sense of what kind of music would be appropriate, that would be helpful. If it's like a specific genre or a particular time frame, something to guide to, that I can give basically to the students and almost like play this. Something young and fun and happy. Or open to whatever the students want to do. Yeah, let them pick something because. Okay. Yeah, that's where the, I think they would. That's where they would go, and you want this to be you know, appropriate. Yeah, I I know a kid who plays the viola, and she plays like six hours a day and practices like crazy, and uh, leaves high school early in order to work on this so that that's my first um thought that i can get something interesting there okay great thanks y'all i appreciate that um okay um that is great um then i guess i think that covers it on switcher park unless anyone has any questions right now um or street garage Progress is happening. Um, uh, Fabrication is nearly complete. Um, requests are in for uh, street closures to allow for installation uh, the first couple of weeks of December. Um, so we're hoping that that will uh, be done by the 17th or so, um, sure. if, if that installation schedule stays on track. Um, and then we'll do a ribbon cutting in the spring um since we're so late in the season at this point um and then uh trades gateway um you know uh the 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 big news here is that ignition arts um wanting to terminate their contract um and so we're going to be seeking out a, another fabricator um holly has been speaking with sean starwitz and lucas brown um about recommendations there I know Holly, you were working on clarifying some of the legal context around that, and uh, you know whether it was as simple as us just being able to select someone else, or if we had to put it out for bid. Have you gotten any clarity there? I haven't. I'm waiting to hear back from them, okay. but I am giving the nudge. <laughs> they love me. Okay. Um, the the other uh, wrinkle here is that um, we've been working towards a February March timing, partially. Uh, to have everything completed and and um, and part of that was due to Stefan Reese's New York residency, which is now off. Um, and so, you know, I guess the good and the bad of this is that things are going to push back later, but at least we have a little bit of flexibility there. Um, you know, we're we're not really pinned into a, a, a timeline. Um, one thing that we should probably discuss a bit um 
I'm really open to, to ideas here is well, there's a partnership um, that we could seek out with, uh, you know, potentially IU, um, you know, to help host Stefan at some point um, next year um, and help. Uh, I think I think one one thing that we've learned when we've done these one percent in city led projects is that we can be better about uh, reaching out to um, folks at IU and just making sure that we're doing our part of connecting the work we're doing in the city off campus um, with the campus community. So there's obviously that that level to it. Um, but uh, you know, it could be that if there's a a collaboration or an opportunity for uh, Stefan to do something, you know, perhaps there's a budget that helps defray costs for bringing him to the states as part of that. Um, and so I think um, I'm totally open to any and all ideas. You know, obviously, um, you know, I think the uh, within the art school and the sculpture department, um, you know, obviously there's like a, a tech element to this. Um, you know, I sort of independent of this um, and have a have a meeting with Ed Komen Tali, um, IU Arts and Humanities Council. That's more related to my day job, but I'm going to broach this with him um, just in case it stirs up any ideas um, on, on that end. But, uh, you know, the, the timeline on all this is still kind of TBD because um, there's, there's a lot of work to sort of start over on, um, but we'll get there um, and uh, open to any ideas as we, we kind of kind of reset and reframe things. Um, I mean, Holly, did I miss anything there? Uh, no, this is all great. Thank you so much, Nick. The, the one thing I want to um, just make sure everyone is aware of, so um, we haven't actually given Ignition Arts any money for this project, so we're not in a position where we've lost any of the funding to that contract. Um, so I, I do anticipate overall cost of this project is going to go up just because we're going to have to work with a new fabricator. I anticipate that many fabricators that we're going to look at just overall, their costs are more. Um, and I also, you know, since we signed on to do this project, material costs, I think, as you all know, at this point are just like kind of going through the roof. This was an issue that we were dealing with with Ignition Arts even before they chose to terminate their contract. Um, so acknowledging that again, these are unfortunately like material costs are just something that is really out of our control. Um, again, I am looking at some funding sources that I will have that usually wouldn't be available from the city again because of Recover Forward and ARPA to be able to offset some of these costs. Um, BUEA has also offered to help um, allocate some funds to help um, supplement any additional costs that we incur for this project. So. Let's make sure we thank them. That's great news. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, then non 1% projects, um, I can give a couple quick updates. I know I'm kind of jumping around the order of how we have it on the agenda here, but um, uh, Sarah Scrabalock, um, who's the uh, who sent the proposal to us wanting to um, submit for a grant with the National Science Foundation um, and wanting to do a mural um, around nanoscience. Um, we provided the letter of support that she requested, which is nothing actionable for us as of now. I simply wait for her grant to be reviewed and, and, and to find out um, if there is a future collaboration for us there. Um, the uh, Near West Side mural, um, you know, we did with uh, the representatives from the, the uh, neighborhood group um, settle on uh, an artist that we want to move forward with, uh, Laura Burke Manis. Um, we had a pretty small pool um, to work with, and so it was a, a relatively easy discussion. Um, I think, let's see here, um, you know, Liz and Rachel, um, you are the two commissioners here who did not participate in that um, public art subcommittee discussion. Um, so definitely feel free to ask any questions here um, if you have them. Um, but I think that's that's kind of it. It's it's basically with with Holly now. Um, yep. And then 
if no questions, other public art opportunities. This is where Holly, I might just turn it over to you um, to, to talk a bit about uh, both the uh, Go Rogers on. Family Farm Park and the, the Hidden Rivers Downtown Project. Sure, thanks. Um, I'm gonna start with the Rogers Family Farm Park, which I keep calling the goat farm because historically it was a goat farm. Uh, but this is a uh, piece of land that's kind of on the southeast part of town. Um, and um, so historically it was a goat farm and it's right now, it's just kind of this like natural area with some paths through it. Um, it's next to the Jordan Creek, which I think we're now calling the Campus River. Um, so there's a little path that runs along there. Um, it's a great spot of land. Um, somebody purchased it a few years ago with the intention of developing it either for housing or for like a trades district basically. And they got a lot of community pushback from that. And they were like, we just want a quiet, passive nature area. And so the person who purchased this land really glommed onto that idea and now has given a large chunk of money to parks just to kind of upgrade the natural area that exists there to kind of upgrade some of the paths. Like I was, I was there on Sunday. Finally, I got out there to do some hiking and um, there are just some parts of the path right now that are kind of like muddy. So they're going to actually build a boardwalk around some of it. So you're not always like trudging through the mud. And they're also going to connect one of the trails to a larger trail system in the area. So this is all great. But what the um, person who's funding this communicated to parks is that in addition to just being a natural land site that is that they're kind of doing this work for in commemoration of his parents, they want some kind of public sculpture in the area. And they are very open to what they want this sculpture to be. And so we decided it would be best to do the call for proposals and review and selection through the BAC. Um, so I'll be working with them and Parks to put together a um, draft RFP, and then I'll be taking it to you all or the Public Arts Committee to just, you know, refine it and then put it out into the public and make the selection. Um, our timeline, the timeline isn't that set. I think they're definitely, they want it sooner rather than later. Um, they're doing the ribbon cutting ceremony for the park itself in May, 2022. They understand that we're not gonna make that deadline. Um, they're okay with that. Um, but um, they are really open to whatever we want to do, I think. And the budget for this is $25,000. Um, so that's the goat farm. Any questions about that before I move on to Hidden River? I would say we should create a timeline that puts and gives us a little bit of a cushion in the end. Yes. To make sure that we have a ribbon cutting before the weather turns again kind of i agree <laughs> so that both of their yeah. ribbon cutting parts are done within the same calendar year yeah okay that's super helpful i agree with that um cool um okay and then the hidden river so i think as you all know um there's a point on um it's kind of like at the intersection of kirkwood and indiana campus river actually goes underground and it remains an underground river for maybe like I would say a mile. And then it kind of pops up near um, the beeline on the south end of town. The mayor is so excited that this exists. And he really wants us to do some kind of arts project that daylights this fact. Um, and so he's basically said to me, what should we do? And I'm like, we should ask an artist what they want to do. So again, um, and I still need to get his final sign off on this being the way forward. But what I would like to propose is we do put another RFP out there for artists to think about how we can best, whether it be through a visual piece, some kind of visual cue along the path, or be it like a sound piece um, or just like some kind of portal where you can look into the river. There's really nothing down there. It's dark and rebar. But um, but so just putting it out there to an artist to say this is the best way to really demonstrate to us artistically what is going on here. Um, so that's uh, once I get the mayor sign off on that, I will also be coming to you all to help approve the draft that I put together for the RFP and getting it out into the world and going forward with that project as well. Yeah, th this one this one is interesting. Um, 
it, like the concept has been kicking around for a minute. I mean, like Sean had had mentioned it in meetings. I feel like going back a, a year, um, if not more, <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, not longer. Uh, you know, but I think what's kind of kind of fascinating the way that you're talking about it is at least every like RFP or RFQ process that um, I've been a part of to this point, the the medium the medium or like sort of the the there was always a narrower context it's like we want a sculptural piece we want a mural or you know we're commissioning a song whatever it might be and so this feels potentially really open-ended you know i think you know the you know we could discuss this here or we could discuss it in a in a, in a public art meeting but i think the thing that i sort of wonder is is that open-endedness interesting is that exciting um or does it potentially set up set us up for a scenario where in reviewing things it's very difficult for us to find uh criteria that can be applied to like such a wide potentially a wide range of concepts right you know um and maybe both of those things are true at the same time right like but um i guess i i'm 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 kind of curious um you know like with that open endedness uh my 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 main concern is does that encourage more submissions does it encourage more interest or is if it's too vague or too open ended does it actually have the opposite effect and sort of suppress interest because people have a hard time wrapping their brains around it and and how to engage with it and wondering whether their discipline or their idea is appropriate, right? Like, and, and, and so, you know, open, I kind of open that up to discussion if anyone has any thoughts on it, but that's, that's sort of what I'm kind of like mulling over, you know, as, as I'm thinking about like how you might go about writing, uh, writing a, a, a request and framing the criteria for this holiday. What do others think? I think I would agree, Nick, if it if it is really open ended, as described, there would have to be some really clear verbiage in the call that that um, makes it obvious that that's intentional. And the idea is that, you know, we hope it will increase because I just went through and this isn't uh, exactly parallel, but I just went through all the calls for papers that are sitting in my inbox. And it's sort of the same thing, like if it's not really specific. Um, I think the default is sort of to um, get a little bit unsure about whether or not um, it's applicable to you. So I think I kind of I like the idea of the open ended. I just think it would be important to be really intentional about the wording. And I think you can even split it in two and you can submit something that's permanent and something that's temporary. And that already kind of narrows both options down into what is possible within each category. You know, we might also want to like add some language that um, I guess encourages like cross-discipline collaboration um, and, and concepts. And we also, you know, I think about how when, uh, you know, particularly if we do a call for say, like a sculptural work or something like that, you know, we have this list of pre-qualified fabricators so that we're in a position to help match make with fabricators. And I think particularly artists that are earlier in their practice or are new to the public art sphere and are sort of scaling up, you know, that might be something else where we could encourage cross-discipline collaboration, but we could also state in the call that, we're open to taking multiple ideas and trying to kind of mass match make, you know, even amongst artists. Like, I, I don't know quite the, the eloquent way to, 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 to frame that, but, um, you know, it, I, I think just when I think about the idea of accessibility and, and, you know, to artists and how we can encourage, you know, the most applications and the most ideas, um, you know, so we have like a, a, a deep pool to, to choose from. I do feel like we need to make sure that we're, we don't to put too many limiting factors on it, right? Like, I think if someone comes with a collaborative idea, that's great, but that isn't necessarily 
automatically better than two ideas that come in separately that might fuse well together. And so like this might be uh, kind of a different sort of review process than, than we've done before and one that might take um, you know, a bit more time and you know, depending on the, the depth of the pool, maybe an extra round or something um, to, to really think about it. We might also think about this like we've uh, done with grants where we have maybe some sessions where people are available to talk individually. Um, that might Great be idea. helpful, you know, and, and that way we could actually help people get connected, but also encourage them to apply and um, just make it more open and friendly. I love that idea. Yeah, that's a that's a great call, Karen. Liz or Babette, do you have anything to add? Okay, I think you have enough there to work with Holly to get awesome. you started. Yeah, thank you all <laughs> yeah. so much for helping like rein me in, but also like push me up. Thank you. This is awesome. I appreciate it. And, and then I, I guess uh, the last project that's that's probably worth updating. Um, but I missed initially was the uh, bike garage, people's park adjacent mural conversation. Holly, you want to dive into that? Yeah, uh, thanks for reminding me of that one. <laughs> Push it on my mind. Um, so uh, we are in the position uh, where it is time to get a new mural up in people's park. Um, and uh, as some of you probably know, the um, the building facade that this mural is on is on uh, the bike garages um, business. And now, just a quick for those who are new in the meeting, that was a three year contract, I believe. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So it was always known that this was going to happen, yes. that it would yes. be revisited. Right, right. So, yeah, the idea was this would be updated and it wouldn't be, it was not a permanent piece. Um, and so we are coming up to the time where we need to do a new RFP for a new design. So currently we are in a state where we need to collaborate with the owners of the bike garage as owners of the wall that this will be going on to make sure that they are comfortable with the language um, that we're putting in the RFP that will go out, um, but in a way, but I think right now, I think there's a little disconnect between what they would like to be in the space and the legacy that we would like to see referenced, knowing that this is a location of a very important historic um, uh, business basically. yeah and throughout the decades that, yeah yeah correct that it's, area and, and has so, been important to the community right we just want to make sure that we're able to come to an agreement with the bike garage for language that they feel comfortable with but that also invites artists to think inclusively about a design that will honor the legacy of this space um and so um right now so i got some great feedback from the public art committee last Friday of thinking about how we can come up with an RFP that is soliciting designs that kind of capture a timeline of what this space has meant um, and putting that into language that the bike garage will be happy with. So again, I'm in process of redrafting that language and then um, I think I will probably share it back with you all and then we'll share it with the bike garage. We also thought that um, the Deputy Mayor John, Don Griffin has also been pretty invested in this conversation as well. He and I had a conversation with the owners of the bike garage um, probably about a month ago now, um, just learning more about what, what their hopes were for this versus like what, you know, a larger community who really feels like a specific history here needs to be on is so we're hoping that Don will continue to be a active part of this conversation, be part of the review panel just so we can all be on the same page of what is going to be the best piece of work to put up on this wall. Any questions, comments, suggestions? Are we missing I'm, anything? I'm, oh, go ahead. Oh. I'm just wondering if there could be a component of this that was not actually part of the artwork, but was more of the historical. 
I mean, if it would be feasible to have, you know, like, like a, I don't know, you know, photographs, history, somehow something that's kind of explains it. Cause it, I don't know, for me, maybe I'm just really anxious or something, but I feel like this, we have to do this really well. Um, and I think that if, we put all that stuff out there in some way, I mean, almost museum-like or something, um, that it might be more accepted and perhaps even the owners would feel better about it. I, I, Karen, I think that's a great point because I do think that is something that the owners have expressed concern about is just like evidence that this is like the place that these events actually took place. I can also share that um, I, I recently learned from parks as I was talking with them about signage for the Switchyard Park that they are able to create signage that includes images on it. So I think that's one option that we can discuss with them for how to include historic images of this in a classy way um, that complements the piece itself. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I think we could even have the past artwork there and say, you know, this yeah, was these true. years and then there were yeah. these years and whatever. And and um, I think that would be helpful. That's great. Awesome. Yeah, I think I think that's a really interesting idea. I mean, I, I don't I, I I don't know how familiar everyone is with with that site and like sort of, sort of the history that we're we're referencing. But, you know, like one 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 big piece of that is um like the the black market fire bombing in 68 and there is now a historical marker there you know so it's, it's it's different than what you're talking about as far as like a you know like like a more of a visual presentation of of, of history there but like there is some context there um you know and, and i and i think that that's that's part of what the you know property owners are concerned about is it just being like, uh, you know, a mural that's overtly focused on, you know, history and and uh, difficult history and, um, you know, the current climate that wants to make it very difficult to talk about difficult history. So it's not an easy one. Um, I appreciate Holly, you and Don continuing the discussion with them. Yeah, it's not an easy one, but it's definitely solvable. And as long yeah, as we don't get impatient and yeah. don't pressure the owners of a store right. yeah, to yeah, I, yeah, make I, a decision, you know, by Friday kind of thing. Right. Yeah, I, I agree because I, I feel like it's 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 really important to, I think one thing we were talking about um, at the public art meeting was just like, it's very important not to censor or erase history. And so I really want to make sure we're not doing this and that the piece really does honor what has happened there in the past. But I do think it's just doing it in collaboration with the owners who are giving us the wall space to do it. And I agree. And I appreciate you, Bryony, saying, yeah, it's going, it might take time, but we will get there and then committing to get there in a way that everybody will be happy with without shutting down any voices. So. Perfect. Yeah. Anything else regarding public art? All right, let's move on to grants. Um, looks like Essence is still in school, so we, she won't be joining us just yet. Do you want to start the update or do you want me to do it, Holly? I can start the update and then you can pop in. Uh, okay. So uh, our uh, fall grant cycle closed on October 29th. Woohoo! We got a lot of requests for project grants, uh, both from some usual suspects as well as from some new um, organizations and artists. So that was really exciting. Um, we got so we got a total of fourteen project art proposals, art project proposals, seven operational proposals, and then unfortunately only two emerging artist proposals, which I know we're going to have a little discussion about later in our session today. Um, so. We are amping up uh, for our Saturday meeting to discuss all of the proposals. And um, those of you who are um, committing to be there on Saturday and have committed to being reading, I express 
all of my gratitude to you for doing all the reading and committing a large chunk of your Saturday to doing it. Um, I'm looking forward to a spirited conversation. Our goal after making having our initial conversation on Saturday the 13th oh, is um, hopefully announcing um, by the end of next week, so around November 19th, and then of course doing the fun work of getting all the MOUs signed and the funds allocated before the end of the year when all the money disappears. Um, I guess one thing I had mentioned, Bryony, earlier is I don't know, uh, I'll look to you all for guidance here because this will be my first cycle, but um, I'm not sure what has been done in the past about like a formal announcement of it, um, you know, and I was wondering, if this would be something appropriate to incorporate into the switchyard ribbon cutting ceremony, knowing that that date aligns with kind of our goal of when we were going to be announcing the recipients of the grant. So I'll answer the first part and then let others chime in on the second part. We, when we just had the one cycle per year, um, it was in the spring and we would announce in June, which coincided with like an arts night and we would present our annual report to city council and so it became like this little event and we would have people every, all of the recipients come in and in that um, lobby in city hall we would have a little event and give out um, the the grants and all of that last year it was really pretty much just letting them know sending letters and it was really kind of under the radar it always felt a little like we could have done more um, I'm not entirely sure if Switchyard is the right place, but I will let others chime in on that. Or maybe not. Um, I, I just don't want to take away from that project by distracting with the grant. That's, that's a, um, no. I think we can do more, no make more noise on social mm -hmm. media and maybe tag every, like create a post for every grantee um, that has a handle and figure out ways to highlight them that way than to take away from one project. That's but I don't know what others think. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll say quickly, I, I think you're probably right, Brian, I mean, just partially because it's coming up so fast. Like, I, like, I feel like if, if we had a little bit more time, and there's an opportunity to actually invite, like recipients to attend, and, you know, we, we had enough time to actually allow them to all fit that in their schedules. And that might actually boost the attendance of the ribbon cutting then maybe that sort of balances out the you know how how it how it might distract from from that in and of itself but like i feel like with with how quickly that's coming yeah maybe maybe we do keep them separate okay and then the challenge that we do have in regards to the emerging artist is one we didn't make as much noise about it as we could have been, um, this time around. And it kind of, in a way, folded itself into the grant cycle. And I think that was probably not our best option moving forward. I think we need to extract it and treat it as its own because the audience is so different. So we were promoting our grants to a group of people who are not the emerging artists. They were getting this information, but we were not making an extended effort to really go out and reach those emerging artists but they don't need to hear all about our project and operational grants um, so my suggestion is to pull it out for next year and we still have those funds that we can move over to next year i'm pretty sure that we have that um, flexibility and try again. I mean, just because we didn't have a huge amount of people apply for it, that doesn't mean we should dump the program. I think there is great merit to it. And we just need to do a better job of sharing the information in the appropriate circuits and treat it as its own entity because it is so different from the other two programs that we have. So that is my overall proposal, but I definitely welcome everybody's input on that. I think that 
that sounds good, Brian. Um, I'd also point out that uh, in addition to needing to market it to the right people, it is still very, poor. It's, it's essentially undefined what the emerging artist is because the original thing that we had decided in part due to needing to get it out there, get the application out there was just individuals who had not received grants from the city before. And then that was kind of changed on the fly. So in order to make the program itself more effective, I would say that the grant subcommittee or the BAC as a whole needs to really take some time out to define what that's going to mean. Good call. Okay, so I leave that in everybody's minds to think about. Um, I know it's a an in, kind of an entirely new topic to think about. So anything that you can bring to the next meeting or email me if you're not on the grants committee, um, email me in essence and share what your thoughts are, your ideas, and we will take it from there. Brian, if I could just real quick, I, I think just as far as like ground game, you know, we, we didn't have the advantage of events being fully opened up, you know, when we were kind of getting into this, but like, I think next cycle really utilizing um gallery walk as like a promotional opportunity because i mean realistically the artists that we want to apply for this are most likely going to be uh you know either showcasing work or walking around and checking out work you know that's that's kind of the audience for this and so you know if it was like um i don't think we need to like print a bunch of flyers or anything like that but even if it's just sort of thing of like a commissioner posting up with a little bit of signage just sort of like on the street promote it at the Waldron and at far or something like that um that that might be as effective a way of getting it in front of the people we want it to as you know as, as some of what we might do digitally yeah that's a great point anything else in regards to grants I think after this, we take a breather, but that's about it. <laughs> I mean, we, we will have the spring cycle and uh, start up fairly soon. So we will have to work out some logistics, but we'll do that through the subcommittee. So that is a good segue into um, update from myself, which is in terms of commissioners, as you know, we've lost a couple of commissioners to life moving and things like that. Uh, we're also going to be uh, losing Essence. Her last meeting will be in December. So we will be short a chair for the grants committee. Now, I'm not asking anybody to step up right now and say, I'll take that challenge on because it is a big challenge. But if you have any suggestions or any thoughts in regards to that, just send me an email. I'm happy to chat. Um, I'm trying to figure out kind of what our next steps are in terms of overall leadership we don't have a secretary holly took notes last time and she will probably transcribe this meeting as well but that is not her role and it should not fall on her hands She's trying to help us on that um, and i've also been actively recruiting uh, possible commissioners and meeting with them and answering questions in as much as i can and giving them an idea of what the scope of the work is and what the involvement is so hopefully city hall is getting a few applications. Yeah, Holly? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they I think they have gotten a couple extra applications. And I am also just doing what I can. So there are two categories of applicate appointments, right? There's mayoral appointments and then there are council appointments. Historically, mayoral account appointments happen much faster because the mayor can just make a decision, whereas the council has to go through an interview process and meet about it. And it can be much more time consuming, especially considering, you know. They're passing budgets and things like that. Um, so, um, but I did have a conversation with um, a couple of people earlier today, both from the mayoral side and from the city council side, just to say, hey, 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 you see this application, please, please, please um, make some moves on it. So I, my understanding is they are going to be um, actively reaching out to those applicants in the coming days um, to have conversations. I don't wanna guarantee anything because 
that's what I was told and I yeah. hope it plays out. But um, but I just I do want to share with everybody that I am trying to find the best way to just get some movement with each of these groups. Um, yeah, I'll and I'm pretty sure we, we have more openings than applications. We do, we definitely so do. Yes. There's still room for more applications. So yeah. if you know of anybody who should be applying, um, you can always send them my way to answer their questions and to give them a, an overview of what it means to be a commissioner. But, um, or you can take it on yourself. That's totally fine. Or just send them to the website to get that information um, that is out there and the uh, apply button, basically. Um, is there something, um, is there any kind of process or the way we should think about rec recruiting people? Do we have, do we try to even out between say visual arts and performing arts or arts administration or, um, you know, is there some scheme that we, you know, that like I should be thinking about when I'm thinking about possible I mean, yes, and what I've been trying is to reach out to different disciplines, different genders, different backgrounds, different levels of experience, different everything in as much as I can. Unfortunately, our process is choppy in the sense that I can, or any of us, I'll just say I for now, because that's what I've been doing, is I can reach out to people that they need to apply, and then it's out of my hands as to how to create that balance, right? If there's say 10 applicants and we have five openings, I have no say in making sure that we have that. It's up to city council. So hopefully they're using that lens as well. Um, what I've been striving to is just make sure that I'm sending a lot of variety in different levels to the pool. Um, in as much as I can. All right, any other questions or suggestions regarding commissioners or anybody want to be secretary or? <laughs> um, and I, I think once we know who else is on the commission, I think we'll, uh, we'll have to kind of take a review and take stock and see what's what everybody's interested in. Um, so I'm not going to pressure anybody into taking notes just yet. But Holly, if you get tired of taking notes, please let us know. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Appreciate that. Um, I think that's pretty much it in terms of projects of committees, unless I'm missing anything. Does anybody have anything else to add before we move to commissioner announcements? All right, let's move on to commissioner announcements then. Any updates from anybody? Babette, no walking the dogs, please. <laughs> that will be my request. Take a few days off. Um, this is intriguing. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> dogs and leashes and entanglement. Um, I can share that we are planning on restarting conferences at under consideration next year. So the month of June will be one where I'm a little bit scarce because that's when we're hosting five conferences in Europe, if all goes well. Um, first one will be in February, second one in May, five in June, and another, our big one in October in Austin. So ideally this is all gonna work out. Um, but especially I want to make everybody aware that June, I will be out of the country for about three weeks for that, if we can pull it off. All right, any other commissioner announcements? Let us welcome our members of the public who are here today. If they want to say hello and if they have anything to share with us. Chaz, we'll start with you since you're always here. Hi everybody, um, FAR has some workshops. We have a really exciting one on November 28th. It's right after Thanksgiving, but it's a cool watercolor workshop. And um, 
there will be wine, wines included. So it's kind of like a fancy wine and canvas, but you learn how to do watercolor. So pretty cool. Um, and I have a photo one coming up next week. And yeah, we have a new show up that opened on Friday, Karen Navarro's The Constructed Self. And it's really cool. Nick was there. Thanks for coming, Nick. And Holly was there. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, so it's a really cool show if you haven't seen it. It'll be up for the next three months, so plenty of time to see it. And that's all I have. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chess. Lindsay, do you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. Um, I've been just a uh, fly on the wall listening in and enjoying the uh, hearing about what the commission's doing. Um, so I don't have anything to promote or, you know, uh, announce. I'm really just listening in this time. So thank That's you. That's okay. No <laughs> worries. Thank you for listening in. All right. Well, magically, we are ahead of schedule here. So you all get half an hour back in your days as we adjourn this meeting and we'll see you all next month. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Have a good night. Take care. Yeah.